In a previous lecture, we talked about the CPS and the data that are available there, and we all made accounts in order to uh, sign up to be able to access those data. So now you want to go to cps.ypums.org, and up here you want to sign into your account. So I've already signed in. The first step is to click Get Data down here. So we're going to compile several variables here, and we're going to put those variables in our cart. So up here you see you have a data cart, which tells you a little bit about your data extract, which currently has zero variables and zero samples. So let's get our first variable, which is going to be wage and salary income in the last calendar year. So this is a person variable. If you go to annual social and economic supplement, you can see all the categories of questions that were covered in this longer form of the current population survey given each March. So if you go here to income, you can now see that there's a whole bunch of different income variables. And here you have the variable label and the variable name over here. And then these X's tell you the surveys for which that variable is available. So we're going to use this ink wage variable, which is wage and salary income. And when you look across the line, you see that this variable is not available in most of the monthly surveys but it is available every year in the annual social and economic supplement, which is going to be the data set that we use. So it's available in 22 and in 2021. And on over here, you can go look at the other availability. To learn more about this variable, we can click on the name and see here a little bit about the codes, the description, some comparability over time, who was asked the question, uh, and even things like the questionnaire text itself for variables that are more directly from the, from the data. Okay, so here we are back at this page. So the way we add ink wage to our cart is by clicking this little plus sign. And now it's been added. So you see up here, you now have one variable and zero samples in the cart. So the next variable we're going to add is a demographic variable, which is age, because we want to restrict to those who are of working ages. So to get to this variable, you're going to go to core, and then demographics. When you click that, you see age here is another variable we're going to capture. And age, you see, is very available in all the surveys. Um, so that's good, because it's going to be available when we need it. So the next variable we're going to add is education, because we're going to look at differences in the earnings distribution across those with and without college degrees. So to get to that variable, we're going to go to core and then education here. And you can see there are many different measures of education. We're going to use this educ variable at the top. So go ahead and add that to your cart. So the next variable we want to get is a measure for weeks worked in the last calendar year. And the reason for this is that we want to look at income from wage and salary for those who worked for the full calendar year. So to get this variable, we're going to go to person. We're going to go back into the ASEC variables. And we're going to look at the work variables. So within work, you can see there's lots of things here. So there's the occupation they held, the industry they held, etc. And what we want is weeks work two. And the reason we're choosing weeks work two instead of weeks work one is because it's available in more surveys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use that. And if you click on it, you can see that it tells you in some categories how many weeks per year the person worked. And we're going to end up ultimately restricting to those who worked 50 to 52 weeks in the calendar year. Okay, so the last variable we want to make sure we get is the weight variable. So each person was included in the uh, annual social and economic supplement with unequal probability. So some people, like people from small states, were included with higher probability because the survey wanted to have a large enough sample of people from every state. So someone in Wyoming might uh, have been selected with much higher probability than a person in California. And so we need to get weights that adjust for that, that give much more weight to the person from California because they represent a lot more other people, whereas the person in Wyoming doesn't represent that many other people. So to get to the weights, we're going to go here under ASEC, and then we're going to go down. Actually, it's not under ASEC, it's under core. We're going to go to technical here. So technical is the category for the variables that are like survey related variables that you would need to analyze the data. And so we got a whole bunch of things here, different weights for different samples that we might be using. And the one we're going to use is the ASEC weight. 
which here it tells us it's pre-selected. So actually we would have gotten this variable even if we hadn't come and clicked on it. Um, the FMs would know that this is a variable we might want and it would just put it in our cart for us. So now we've finished selecting our variables. And in the future, you can go through this data set and select lots of different variables for your own research questions. Um, but for now, we're going to go up here and click View Cart. OK, and when we view Cart, we see that it tells us add samples to create a data extract. So we've told the system which variables we want, but we haven't told it which surveys we want to include. So do we want to include all of these monthly surveys or only certain of the surveys? So if you click Add More Samples, now it's going to give you some choices. And you see how there are two big categories here for the default samples. So there's the Annual Social and Economic Supplement given each March. And we actually want to get all of those. So let's do Select All Samples. That's going to take us all the way back to 1962. And then it also has us selecting many of the basic monthly samples, and we don't want those because we want to have our data extract be as small as possible. So since we're going to analyze the annual social and economic supplement anyway, then let's not get all the other samples as well. So if you click select all samples and then you unclick it, now we're down to zero of 564 selected. So then we click submit sample selections. OK, great. So now when we look here, we have all of the ASEC samples back to 1962. And we have these many variables that we've chosen. In general, it's now a good practice to just download all of these. So this includes the variables we picked and also many pre-selected variables that IFMS thinks we might care about. But this also can result in a really big data extract because um, we're going to have hundreds and thousands of thousands or even possibly over a million rows here. And so I would like us to reduce our data extract size as much as possible for the sake of ease of downloading and for storing on your computers. So for this particular analysis, I know that we're not going to use the serial variable, the month variable, the CPS ID variable, the ASEC flag, H flag, the household weight, or the per num or CPS ID P. So those are all variables that are often very useful. So they tell us things like, is this sample from the ASEC or from the monthly CPS? Or they tell us, um, like, how much should we weigh a household when we're doing a household level analysis? Or they tell us which person this is within the household. But for our purposes today, we only want these variables that have remained checked. So you can go ahead and uncheck the other ones. Now we'll click Create Data Extract. And that takes us to a page that looks like this. So here we have 61 samples, and we have six variables for each sample. And you can see here which samples that is. Yes, it's all the ASEC samples. And which variables. And this looks right. This is all the variables that we said we want. So down here, there are several options for data format. And we're going to choose stataformat.dta, which may surprise you since we're using R. Um, DTA is like the proprietary data format for stata. But the DTA files from IPMS contain some extra information, and R can read them. And so we find that useful, because then we get that extra information into our R console. And we'll leave this as a rectangular person file here. So if you've had to click this little radio button for Stata, then click Apply Selections. And now you should see that your data format is coming in Stata. Okay. So a last step we can do to reduce the size of our extract is to select cases. So this allows us to select only the units that have a particular value along a few particular variables. In our case, we're going to focus on people ages 30 to 45 in order to catch them at the height of their careers. So we'll click Select Cases, and we want to choose specific values along age. So here now we have the option of we want to include only those persons meeting the case selection criteria. And here we're going to choose 30. And then I believe if you hit Command, you can check multiple. And I believe Command Shift lets you pick a whole region. So let me try that. I'm going to go 30. And I'm going to go down to 45. And Command Shift click. And so now I've selected from 30 to 45. And then I'll click Submit. 
Okay, so we're ready. We have our 61 samples with six variables in Stata format, and we've told it we only want ages 30 to 45. Here you can describe your extract a little bit, uh, just so that you can find it again more easily later. So this could be like data for class exercise. And then you click Submit. And so here you come to a page where you can actually see all your history of um, CPS downloads in the past, and you can see that it's processing your data here. If you ever want to add a variable to your data set, you can click Revise here and uh, then add a new variable and create a new extract and it'll then process that one. So this processing step for a data set of this size will probably take on the order of a minute or so. Uh, this will become a check mark when it's ready to go and they'll also send us an email. Great, so now we have our check mark and we can do download DTA. And so now you can go ahead and download that file and you're ready to go. And so a last step will be to open this on your computer. This step is gonna be specific to your computer and you're gonna to wanna to unzip that file because it's currently a gzip file. And on a Mac, you can do that just by clicking it. And when you click it, it'll unzip it so that the new file will just end in .dta. Then also on your computer, you're gonna to wanna to put that in a folder where you're gonna work with this file in R. So that same folder will hold the data and it will also hold your R markdown file uh, where you're gonna work with the data. And so that's it for downloading the data for this exercise from IPOM CPS.